Chief, you're back. Here I am. Back to tell it how it is, I guess. For so many years, you've been a big fixture in my life uh, between, <laughs> I, name a category. Uh, and uh, I mean, just between friends and the community, then fires. And remember when the town was real small? Oh, yeah. Um, here's where we begin today. A lot of stuff's been happening in Osara. There's been a lot of growth. What's the difference in your life today versus just a few short years ago? Well, we went from, well, my personal life is, I work a lot now, more than I used to. But um, as far as the fire department's concerned, we went from a small group of people volunteering to show up and, and uh, help out with whatever needed to be done to having maybe three or four calls a year to now... Every year it seems to double the amount of calls based on the, the amount of people coming in. You know, the last year there was, I want to say 400 and something calls. And then this year we're up almost 700. So a lot of those being, you know, medical emergencies, vehicle accidents, um, a lot of animal calls. Is it an even frequency across all the different calls? Not really. It's random. every. It's, it's a whole new surprise every week. No, I get you know, to, I mean, I'm saying shift. as far as like animal calls, do they pace about the same increase? Uh, accidents, do they pace about the same? I'll be honest with the animal calls. The animal calls have decreased a little bit due to awareness. We have a lot of uh, classes that we've been putting out to the schools and, and, and private and public areas to teach about the awareness of the different animals that they might encounter. And a lot of times now, instead of getting an emergency call, I'll get a, hey, what is this? And then I'll answer, okay, that's, that's a leer snake. It's not dangerous. And they'll be like, okay, I'll just shuffle it out with a, 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 a broom to avoid having to bring in a whole emergency service to come in and relocate this animal. Gotcha. So as you're giving us this update for we're recording this the end of 2021, it sounds like the education stuff that you've been up to in previous years is starting to engage. Absolutely. And it's, it's one of our focuses on the town as well. Within doing that, we've built a team of instructors within our team, our group that has first aid CPR, incident command, level one, two, and three, pre-hospital care, trauma. Um, we have swim instructors through our lifeguard program. We're, and, and we're increasing that. We're about to do instructor for wilderness uh, uh, first aid. So it's a, you know, kind of a, a really good piece for us because we are so far away from a hospital. I mean, thank God for the, the clinics we have here and, and the private doctors and, and, and help there, but truth be told is there's a lot of times to where we're kind of on our own out here. Yeah, it's been the story of your life here, really, huh? It's okay, though. I'm, I'm good with that. That's why I'm here. Yeah, I, say, I, th I think that was your link to this place because you're a man of many skills. I mean, between your military background, your fishing background, your diving, fighting training, just just all these different things that you've been a part of since since I've known you. It seems like your ability to deal with heavy, intense situations. And you're, it's almost like you're, there's some sort of connection there that's not in most people. And I think that's what gives you such an anchor here and it's helped make such a difference because we are in the middle of nowhere. And it's really hard to stay ready to answer phone any time of day, all the time, nonstop, year after year. Like that's, that's not normal and you're not normal for that. So thanks for being weird in that way. That's absolutely my pleasure with that. You know, it's honestly, I feel like that uh, I was placed here to do something that couldn't be done. You know, I can't tell you how many years I got told from everybody, you can't build a fire department. You just can't do that. And here we are. All right. So right now, fast forward I, us through our updates because now it's not just the Bomberos. We got lifeguards, all types of stuff going. That's right. So fill us in. Right now I have uh, 27 firefighters, uh, two pumpers, two rescue vehicles, uh, kind of a, a beast we put together for forest dollars, for forest fires, and a jet ski and a quad of all of our all of our equipment involved. We have uh, 15 lifeguards right now. Three of them are permanent, fully paid for full time. And the bomberos and the fire department, we have three paid as well. Two firefighters and one administration. Hopefully, we'll be able to raise the money for the next year to add another firefighter full time. And two more part-time lifeguards, that's our plan. Uh, right now, with the lifeguards, we have one tower finished in Palata, and the, we're hoping to have the next two towers finished by the end of January. Hey, are you catching any blowback from the local populace over this at all? Generally, no. And right now, I have the permission from the refuge 
in order to do the, the, the towers properly and legally. We have, uh, and, and generally the, the, there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like something. It just doesn't matter who you are. There's always going to be that person. And you know what? Sometimes you just have to weigh out the good and the bad. Um, that's the, the reality of it. Because the towers, having them on the beach has already, <laughs> just having the lifeguards on the beach, we have over a weekend, we'll probably have 200 preventions between the two beaches. That's just saving people before they actually do something. You know, and, and the rescues and lives we've saved, you know, really make a big difference here. I was just, as you were saying that, I was realizing the drowning frequency definitely has increased as Nosara's got more popular and we finally have lifeguards on the beach. It was always an idea or something we wish for or hope for. It's actually happening. Well, before the way it worked for us is we would do the aquatic response as a response. So somebody's stuck in the water. Let's go. Okay, we get there and we deal with the situation there. And now, and, and it's, it save a lot of lives that way, but it doesn't have the prevention factor. Ray's Lee. It's, it's exactly. You know, even though, say, like from our station to Pilata is about four minutes to get there. Still, it gets us there in a pretty good amount of time. But at the same time, having somebody there in that immediate response really changes a lot. And we've been there and we've been any major emergency there's been on the beach. We've been there and been in, and been in control of the situation and, and found the, the resolve at the end, whether it was good or bad. And uh, it's just nice to be able to say we have a solid response now and we have good, fully qualified, accredited lifeguards. Well, so all this is awesome, by the way. It's so nice to hear you rattling off equipment and people and so many things that you didn't use to say when we sat here and talked didn't have them that's what i'm saying so that's that's so let's celebrate some successes but the reality is you got to pay for this somehow that's we right. used to do big fun drives whenever we would have a fire or floods or something dramatic but you're doing we're well, working on a different level now you're working on prevention you're working on fully staffed people trained in multiple arenas like it's this what i'm trying to say is i don't see this getting any cheaper so how's that going these days well we we manage it as low cost as possible, you know, and our budget's not really, we always had, you always had to, our budget's not out of the ballpark, you know, it's, it's something that's doable, <laughs> but what it is, is now that we're fully nonprofit in Costa Rica and we still have our 5013C through Amigos of Costa Rica in the States, we're making it more available and easier for people to donate so they can do it legally. So to clarify for anybody who didn't catch that now are able to make tax deductible donations via the U S and the 51C3s, and then also in Costa Rica, you have that same ability. So That's whatever, the, we give them. We we have the ability to receive donations that excludes uh, the IVA tax and rent. That's fantastic. Now, do you want people to donate towards the bomberos or towards the lifeguards or towards a specific landing well, spot? Well, what, what we generally will encourage is to donate for bomberos operations. Bomberos operations covers everything and where it's needed most. It's like so the that, general fund. It's a general fund that covers the lifeguards and the fire department. So basically, you know, it can help out on both sides. We also used to have some success with the, with the events. Supporting Osara is, is the big event and people really liked it. Yeah, it was fun. It's just COVID kind of shot that down in the last couple of years. Yeah, right. And now we're kind of looking for some new ideas to, to be a little bit fresh. What are you guys thinking? How many events this year? We're going to try and do three events this year. Um, That's great. not quite sure exactly are what they're going to be. We've got some ideas for some races and some, some really fun stuff that I think is going to be catchy. We should preface volunteers to be ready to please help out. Cause that's the hard part. If you can't get the horsepower to make it with spin. It's the idea, you know, and generally when we ask for help in the community, they, they step up usually. Yeah. The unifying thing here for people who hate each other, I think is when stuff goes really wrong here. And you guys are on the front of that and you get to see different people who truly can't stand one another for whatever reason it may be together working on something. And that's that's kind of interesting. We take pride in the fact that we can ride the line between the two different cultures, I'll call it. Um, when I say that, I don't mean different people. I mean different ways of thinking. You now, have, to clarify for a listener, I know where you're coming from, but to clarify for listeners, are you saying brown white or are you saying cultures of mindset? Cultures of mindset. Cultures of mindset completely because you can't classify it that way because it's just not real. We, we ride the line between the two different ways of thinking to where we can 
kind of mend them and have an overlap in some places to where we can bring a little bit more clarity to both sides. And, and, and it helps the community a lot. When the scientists came down, that whole thing we did last year, what they said unequivocally was communication, communication. Even if people hate each other, if you hate the information, make it flow. If information flows enough, that is the saving grace to get your town to grow the way you want it to. And get. Sure. So we're trying to get that going. I can say at the end of 2021, it seems to be happening more than years past. No, you, we're definitely working much co much more cohesive uh, right now. But now let's ask, I want to ask just you personally, there's a lot of strong personalities and strong people uh, around what you're doing and thank God for every one of them. But when mindsets go A and another goes B and then people kind of hunker down on that, how do you deal with that personally? I just brush it off personally. And I, I have a very thick skin when it comes to things like that. I've, so you don't you don't hold it in or carry it with you too much? No, I, I, I just basically I stick to the truth, keep my transparency, and that way everything is it not, doesn't change. I don't I have gotcha. to I don't have to invent things. Is there ever a time where you change your mind and you're like, you know what, I think I want to look at it that way that you can think of? Absolutely. If somebody comes to me with a better idea or a better way of doing something, absolutely. I'll, I'll weigh in all the factors. And if it's better than my idea, I absolutely we'll take a look at it. Who are some people out there that are really helping you right now and staying close to the, to the front? Or I almost said close to the fire, but that sounded bad. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. The majority of the people that are helping us like financially and stuff, they're, they're not really wanting to be publicly acknowledged. So I, I can't really go and, and give a bunch of names over that. The main main people that are helping us anyways, you know, and <clears throat> there's a few businesses that help out quite a bit, you know, and, and have in the past, you know, uh, I'll say uh, uh, Gilded Iguana has helped out a lot with a lot of their fundraisers and, and, and uh, just participation. Um, Do you still have your same old stalwarts, your harmonies, your surf simplies and those types of things? And folks? that's, that's, we lost that for a while because of the inability to give legal receipts. So all of those are about to start back up. I've got confirmation from the Harmony, Surf Simply, uh, the Ferreteria, and a, and a few other businesses that are, are in the network of, of restarting that whole. Well, let's hope some other business owners are hearing this right now and realizing they can get on that as well. Well, that's the idea. Is The idea is, is trying to get as many businesses on more of a monthly donation or a, a nice, chunky yearly donation. Because the truth is, is when there's a problem in Nosara, or the, I'll say the Consejo Nosara because it covers all of the area of Nosara, um, generally we're the ones that go. You know, it's just, that's just the truth of it. You know, there's... With the Red Cross in town, I can't speak too much about them because I'm not part of them. But there, there's times when they're not available, you know, due to whatever reason they may have. And we cover those those areas. It seems like that's a ongoing challenge now, as always has been. And it seems like it will be in the past. Like my story, for example, 911 didn't work. We tell people to call 911. Like, the kids, well, oh, I here, tried here, that. But here it's best to call us directly. Well, that's what I'm saying. The the phone call to you when I had my accident, you're right at my house. Because we're officially we're trying to solicit to be part of 911. That's something we're in the process of working with. Uh, we have several uh, public private partnerships we're working on at the moment with various government entities. That you know, once they're confirmed, then obviously we'll be. Hey, we got this done. But I, I'm going to keep it at that. So for same the time protocol being. for now for anyone listening. That's right. And we posted the signs all over the place saying, call 911 or our number directly. Now, we did that because if you need the police or Cruz Roja, you have to initiate that through 911. But if you need us for anything else or everything else, you have to call us directly because if you call 911, the 90 percentile is nobody's going to call us. So that's just where we're at at the moment. Uh, we're hoping to fix that once we become a... We're, right now, we're striving and working very hard to become a public interest here in Costa Rica. And part of the, the public-private partnerships we're working on will help solidify that. And by doing that, that could help us financially and, and uh, on a communicative <laughs> level as well. So we have a lot of... I, I spend my head in politics quite a bit lately. And, I'm, and we're working very, very hard to try and make this so that we can give the best protection to the town as possible because um, the truth of it is, is if there was another institution that came in to say, take us over, that would mean 
by their protocols, they don't do the same things that we do because we do everything based on the fact that we've always been the responses first. Take care of the response first and then think about the politics of it later mm. because the rescue is the most important part. I've of the always, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, I, I don't want you to go past this point. Some of us have always appreciated that about you guys and we recognize it. So like it, it's appreciated, just so you know. That's probably something you don't hear enough, but people do realize there is a difference in the quality and the tension and doing everything that you can with so little resources. And I still try to explain to people coming to the town forever. It all existed off of the people. Mm -hmm. The government's not funding the bomberos to do all of our stuff as, as, it, as they're used to. And I think when we move to town, it's very hard to realize that that's actually true. You have to be part of the solution. Well, and the, the taxes that are paid to the bomberos in the country don't help us. It doesn't go to us in any form or way. So, I mean, we, we are working towards a resolution to that in the future with our public pri private partnerships that we're working on. So there is a, a financial resolution as well in the future. So it's not a permanent, we have to pay for the firefighters forever. It's just getting us to the point to where we can sustain ourselves through on a government level. And it's, it's a very difficult process because in Costa Rica, there's never been a fire department like ours ever in history. So we have to find our way through the laws to exist. I've always thought behind your back, into your face, I've always thought Ryan's going to turn this into a fantastic operation and the people behind it are going to turn into a fantastic operation and that's happened. But I've always thought if you connect it on the government level, you're going to get clipped yourself and they're going to ignore how beefy and solid it is. And that's always been my fear. I've always thought you're basically building up this wonderful thing. You're going to turn it over into what it should be. And then they're going to come in and eradicate a lot of the great practices and methodologies. Well, and then we, we've tried a couple times to integrate with the, the government side of things. And it's always been that. And so then we finally, we step back. Okay, we're just going to handle this and we're going to take care of it ourselves and we're going to build it as legal as possible through the means we can. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're you know, I have to be a little obscure on what I say because we haven't finalized anything yet. So I have to keep that off the record. All right. Sorry for but, bringing up a sense but no, of no, no, subject it's too, great. But it's great because people need to know that we are making positive movement forward to become more legitimate as far as the country's concerned. That's good you know, to hear. With the 911 system, with the municipalities, with all the different uh, organizations that we have to be part of. So I laughingly say funding, <laughs> that'd be nice. Let's, and the end game is that's the idea. You know, there's a lot of people that say the federal guys should come here and, and take over. They have pretty shiny trucks and they have all the stuff. The, the thing of it is, is they don't do the same emergencies that we do. There would be a uh, definite whole, I'll say. I got you. So let me ask you this. What's your core message outside of donations are definitely needed to make this whole machine work. What's your core message to people out there who are coming into Nosara, uh, visiting this high season or coming back to their vacation home? What do you want them to hear right now? Most importantly is we're here no matter what. We're going to be here. We're going to protect you. You can call us at three in the morning and we'll always show for whatever emergency it may be. If you're stuck on your roof, if you've crashed your car into a, a fence whatever a snake crocodile whatever it may be we'll, we'll show up um but we do need the support of everybody that can you know we're not asking for a lot i mean gosh if every person in this town gave a dollar a month we'd be fine i was just about to say if, if visitors come through who are staying in a vacation rental home or homeowners who have a vacation rental home if they left out something for five bucks just for people to drop off for a guest every little bit helps you know i mean a little bit turns into a lot really quickly here you know, so don't think that you can't donate just because you don't have a lot to donate. Hey, do you remember this is this is pre COVID. Do you remember we had the hat system that went out? I do. Uh, I've been working on, on that a little bit, too. Um, like, can we try that again? Or are we yeah. breaking some rules there? No, 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 we're not breaking any rules with that. The idea is with that is that uh, I just need people to be able to maintain it. And I, right now I'm structuring my team for those extra things. You know, right now I'm, I'm finding a new person in charge of my internet, Red Social. I'm trying to find a new person in charge of, uh, you know, fundraising. So I, I have a few things that I'm trying to find people to fit into. 
And once those are established, you know, we're going to try and get back into merchandise again and selling shirts and hats and stuff. Yeah, too. So, so, so we're, we're it, working our way the back. The wheels in. are turning yeah. towards productivity and, and enhancing stuff. Is uh, Can you give us an update on the board? The board of directors, we just re-affiliated our board yesterday. And uh, we have a full new, fresh board of directors. Um, congratulations. And uh, we're, like, congratulations. We're good up to that point. Fresh board of directors and renew in the Bomberos isn't a sentence I normally conglomerate together. <laughs> you know, we, we, we have some of the old school still in there because, you know, there's... Shout out to them, by the way. There, there's that aspect, you know, that you just can't live without. You know, there's that old original mentality that still needs to be there. Yeah. And just so y'all know, the reason why I'm not on the board is because I'm the executive director and I can't be on the board and be paid at the same time. We still have Agnes as a treasurer? Yes, we do. Um, we got to find her a replacement. We do. She's done her time. No. And she's ready. Um, she's actually expressed that. And so we are looking for a new treasurer for that position. The new people are stepping up? Some. You know, it's, it's a very... Well, treasurer is a hard position to it, fill. It, 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 we're a very active... Um, board of directors when it comes to the financial side of things because a lot of the movements are through the treasurer it's a busy job is joe still parking a truck at via mango no 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 no. we have all of our vehicles at the station that way everything's ready to go by whoever's on duty we have a 24 7 watch and uh, our station's located in Cayo rosales and santa marta at the moment we do have plans to build a proper station on the land that we own right next to the, the police station in osara so the municipality of Nicoya is helping us get the documents together, and we're looking for three quotations right now to start the building. And then, nice. obviously, once we have how much that's going to cost, we have to fundraise that as well. Hey, man. Congratulations on all the progress that's happened, and thank you for what all of you do. Thank you so much. It's 100% all of our pleasure. I don't believe you, but thank you anyway. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> The amount of heart that comes into the volunteers that work with us is it has to be at this level because you don't go put your life on the line at three in the morning without having that. It just doesn't happen, you know, so you're not going to a cookout and, and serving drinks as the volunteer. You're going to something dynamic. And you know, you're going to something person. that could be very ugly, you know, and, and very graphic depending on, on what the type of emergency may be, you know, so hats off to all my volunteers as well, because they, I couldn't be here without them at this point. Many thanks to all of you. Thank you. I do want to do one more shout out on the Red Cross because they need help. They're, our, ma help. They, they're our main ambulance service in town for, for the majority of the people. And they are currently understaffed and underfunded. And we don't want them to go away. We, Can we, people make a donation designated to them? Or does it go into Red Cross of all of Costa Rica? I believe it goes into... I, I'm not 100% certain on how the details of that work. So I would check with the Red Cross on that one and, and find out for sure. But the truth... And I know that people can donate things directly, like a physical thing, directly to the Red Cross. So I have to give a shout out to them because they... When they're available to be there, they are. And they handle the stuff that nobody else wants to. We do cover the, the open spots where they're not available, but we don't do transport. So we handle the first response. And my goal is not to get ambulances. So my goal is to keep them going so that they can <laughs> keep up their side of things. Well, it sounds like it's a pretty fantastic end of 2021 update, Ram Bombard. You have, not only do you have staff, all the progress that you did, you just outlined with the Bombardiers, we also have the lifeguard it's a real thing. Like it's actually here and the towers are up and people are safer. And what a difference from a couple of years ago when we sat in front of these mics. It's nice right? to see. No, it's, it's, it's a whole new world we're walking into. And I think 2022 is going to be a, a, a good year. All right. Hope, hopefully people hear this and give back. And again, thanks to all of you and thanks to all the donations that come in from wherever they come from. Yeah. And, and maybe you guys can put the link from the, from Amigos of Costa Rica on here for uh, donations. My, my lifeguards, they work seven days a week on the beach, in both beaches. Um, fire department, we're 24-7, always. I have uh, two shifts that are always on. And uh, for whatever may happen, we're ready. Hey, you look good too, man. You look good. Well, thank You're you. You're getting younger. Yeah, right. 
I don't believe you, but okay. No, I don't mean in hair and all the obvious stuff. I'm saying just in your eyes and smile and skin and stuff. Well, I actually get days off now. That's what. That's kind of what I was getting at. I was hoping you'd say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, everything's everything's moving forward. You know, I mean, you learn how to sleep happy. again. Yeah, you know, Mas menos. The end goal for me on this, the whole Bomberos Nosara, is to make this a legacy, so we can see our younger generations of our. Bomberitos, because we have a group of bomberitos, and and then become firefighters, and then start to see generations and be like, okay, this is, we've been around for 13 years now. Next thing you know, in, in 26 years, I can be like, hey, we're still going. As I'm sitting at home drinking a beer, watching everything go down, you know, that's the that's the real hope, you know, to see this turn into something that that becomes uh, a forever thing. That's the real goal. Thanks so much. My pleasure. 